Tennessee, save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Look at that one right there. Hi, everybody. Full audience. Full audience. Why do I say it like that? Full audience. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are in a good mood today. You guys think we're, yeah. Jeff, we didn't tell them we're giving them anything today, did we? No, I just want to make sure. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jason Show. Let us start with this. Not the typical hazard at a ski slope in Wyoming. Look at this. A moose started running alongside a group of skiers this week. Look at that. You can see the 10 foot uh, moose right behind one of the guys. Look at him. Look at him. His friends encouraged him to ski faster to avoid, to avoid the moose. Now they did manage to avoid the moose, so Thank goodness nobody was hurt. Nobody was hurt. That's right. <laughs> we promise no animal collisions today on the show. Maybe. You never know, though. Maybe the front row. Be careful. Let's start the show. Roll it, Steve. Here we go. Good friend, give it up for Kendall, everybody. Hello, love. How you doing? I'm great. I'm watching that, and all I'm thinking is, like, I am not good enough of a skier that that would ever have gone well for me. No, and I know we live in the land of winter, not this year. I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm mean, i wearing shorts, yeah. for heaven's sake, but uh, I, I'm not a skiing kind of guy. I used to be, like, a great little skier when I was a kid because you just have no fear. You know, yeah. you just go, Voo! Nowadays, I would see that and be like, oh my God, just take me, Moose, just take me. Because, because now we're aware of our own mortality. Yes. We are aware. And we are injured. No, and I gotta, if I was, I, well, we are. And, and if, if I was on a ski slope and there was a wild animal next to me, uh -huh. I would just fall. In, I would let them eat me. Yeah. I wouldn't try to, I just would try the, just like, fall. Just try the, like, fainting tactic. Yeah. Um, I always like to acknowledge special people in the audience. And uh, can we take a shot of the gentleman in the front row? Is, is there a better sweatshirt right there? <laughs> Sir, can we see your sweatshirt? Yeah. It's a terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> I got it to Aaron. Aaron Schwab comes back again. We have a little meeting back there. Uh, she tells me how the audience is. Are they quiet? Are they fun? Are there are a couple criminals in the audience, whatever. And then, uh, but today she goes, oh, they're great. They're fun. There's some birthdays. There's a group here. And then she goes, and you got to see the guy in the front row. Uh, the best sweatshirt ever. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's a Delano group, and he said, oh, and there's, oh, he's separate. There's, now, why the hell did, did he not want to sit by his friends, or what's going on? Yeah. Oh, he didn't, oh, the, oh they didn't want him. Okay, yeah. yeah. No. I'm telling you. It's out here. I, Main streets. I'm telling you, I'm one step from letting him host this damn thing. He can come up here. Yeah, he can do a better job. Hey. Okay. One more piece of business. Now, I know I've gotten a lot of justified grief from you uh, uh, that I forget to invite you to things, uh, happy hours, extra, you know, I, I know audience, I, I feel bad. And he you should feel so bad for yes, me. Yes, and you, and you have yet to do uh -huh. a fast food field trip. It's true. Today, we're rectifying that. She's doing the fast food field trip. 
Now, now, hold on. You're not going to see it today. We're filming it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. But, we're but eating. I do love the irony is we're taking her to a restaurant she can't stand. But that's no, fine. That's right. Fine. Yeah. It's fine. I've stony like most of the menu, but it's fine. Fine. Because you're be you're a yeah. you're a herbivore. Yeah, I'm a herbivore. Yeah. Everybody. I'm a herbivore. I am a carnivore. She is a herbivore. So. I just am selective with what I eat. I I'm get it. Just like, like our <laughs> photographer Eric, he's a vegetarian. We're yeah. He's like yeah. <laughs> Eric and I are bad vegetarians. Right, Eric? That's what that's we right. say. Yeah. Yeah. Bad if you're wondering, that's a little private joke with the staff about Eric there. Yeah, right? <laughs> Eric's a full-time vegetarian. Let's get started. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Steve. Here we go. <laughs> Eric, your wife still doesn't watch the show, does she? Uh, sometimes, she okay, yeah. Today. I'll keep my mouth shut then. Hey, let's start with the future of Disney. Uh, the entertainment giant is making some big moves this week as part of, you know, their earnings report where little Bobby Iger gets on the phone and tells everybody how much the mouse made. And they released some surprising news. Look at this. Here's the deal. Uh, we're getting a Moana too. Uh, now that surprised. Uh, now that surprised everybody. And then this is really what surprised people. We're getting it in like eight months. We're getting it in November. Wow. Now here's the deal. The reason. The reason everyone was like, huh? Because it was developed as a TV show on Disney Plus, but then Disney bigwig, little Bobby Iger was impressed with early footage and he's like, why are we doing this as a show? Let's do this as a big movie. Lin-Manuel Miranda will not be uh, doing the music for this one. He did it in the first one, did a great job. Moana, Moana 2 will be released before we get a live action remake of the remake of what? the remake of, of Moana. <laughs> but yeah. What? Don't ask, your, okay. your head will spin, yeah. <laughs> No, this is this is what he does. Now you can criticize a lot about Disney. You can criticize Iger, but what he's great at is being a, a creative force. Mm -hmm. Meaning, he gets in there. He has a good eye. He right. gets in there and he's like, "This is crap. Let's not release that. This is good. Let's get this out there." I mean, he greenlit. Look, everybody has flops, mm -hmm. but he greenlit a lot of good stuff. This is what he's good at. So I'm sure he got in there and was like wait a minute, this would be better as a movie, mm -hmm. and we need some good movies, because Disney was a turd last year. I mean, there wasn't one, they had a box office anything. bomb after another. Yeah. Again, I love Disney, but I'll call them out when we need to. On the streaming front, Disney announced Taylor Swift's Eras concert film will hit Disney Plus on March 15th. It will include, God, she's smart. It will include five additional songs cut from the theater version and the on-demand versions. Eras, by the way, is the highest grossing concert movie of all time. Once again, as I said with Disney, you may not like them. You may love them, just like Taylor. You may not like her. You gotta give it to her and her business team. Mm -hmm. to re you know, I... Mm -hmm. Yep. Because think about it. Right? Think about it. You have the highest grossing tour, yep. then let's turn it into a movie. Mm -hmm. Let's distribute it ourselves. That direct. Direct to AMC. Yep. And then, oop, let's not put in all the songs mm -hmm. because then we're going to hold it for our home video release to make people want to watch it again or yep. for the first time. Uh-huh. Brilliant. And by the way, I did. I saw it in theaters. My yeah. sister got us tickets, and at first I was like, I don't really know how I feel about seeing a concert in theaters. It was so good. I've like, heard that. It was really, really good. So it's worth getting something to watch. Yeah. I'm gonna. You know? I, I'm. I am gonna watch it. I, I didn't. I didn't go because I didn't. Good. You know. Yeah. I didn't go to the Swift concert. I didn't want to worry about friendship bracelets, and I, I didn't. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I made one. I know, but I'm almost 50. I know. I just yeah. Anyway. <laughs> During a sit-down with CNBC, Bob Iger also dropped this news about gaming. This is huge. We've entered into a, a strategic relationship with Epic Games, the maker of Fortnite, uh, to not only invest in the company Epic, which took a minority stake, billion, five hundred million dollar investment, but we're also creating with them a huge uh, Disney universe. Okay, now audience, audience. How big is this company 
That did you hear, Bob? Yeah. 1.5 billion got them a minority stake in the company. <laughs> anyway, uh, the deals with Epic Games. Uh, it's the biggest, uh, the company's biggest investment in gaming ever. Disney's biggest investment in gaming. Shortly after the announcement, Epic and Disney released a trailer, a little teaser video for this new universe. Let's look at this. Discover a place where magic. Epic. I don't get it, but anyway, Iger says. <laughs> Iger says gaming is on the same level of entertainment, uh, of, uh, same level of entertainment as TV and movies. Mm -hmm. There is a recent, there's a poll, there's a recent study that says uh, Gen Alpha, Gen Y, I don't know, the, the younger people. The they, Gen Zs. They spend more time and money on gaming than yeah. they do movies and TV. Yes. So if I'm Mickey Mouse, right. uh, yeah, I'm going to buy into that company. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. Well, in the Fortnite folks, they already have everything that you need to be able to make the game. They already have the consumers. They already have the technology. Disney just has to go, here's all of our universe of characters and things. Use it. Go with it. And audience, I'm probably, I know we have to go, but uh, I want to talk to the people that are my age. Uh, it, I don't get Fortnite either. I don't know what it is. I, I thank you, Front Row. I don't get it. I know it's like a universe-building game, uh -huh. and I'm a little bit of a nerd. I don't get Didn't it. Did you play Sims ever? On no, the I, I was Sims? working here. I was working here when Sims came out. Sims. No, I, yeah, Sims. I, it's like, oh, I hear it's like Animal Crossing. Yeah. Now, Animal Crossing I played. The only thing I cared about during the pandemic was staying safe, yes. keeping my family safe, and preparing my island on okay. Animal Crossing. So yeah, I love Animal you Crossing. Get it. Yeah. You get it. Okay. <laughs> Let's pay some bills. We'll be right back. Back after this. Stay with us. <laughs> Animal Crossing, man. My life. Look at this. More celebrations in the audience today for the Jason Show Birthday Club. They all get a pin, a sash, up to $20 of free play at Grand Casino. I love you, Grand Casino. You can sign up when you book your tickets to come to the show uh, at eventbrite.com. There we go. And remember, when you do sign up, uh, you don't, it's not nothing special. You go to eventbrite.com and there's a little option to say, hey, it's my birthday. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Oh, but no, let's not move on first. Speaking of the audience, <laughs> now this is just getting crazy here and I love it. The audience keeps bringing me Starbucks and I love it uh, because by this time of the morning, I've already done the radio show. I'm either uh, half asleep or half crazy. So this is, or thank both. you, or both. So Rhonda, thank you very much for bringing this to me. I appreciate it. I mean, it says Rhonda. I hope her name is Rhonda. That's what it says on the cup. Yeah. Whose is this? Yeah, exactly. Let's get going. More dish for you. The Traitors is one of my new favorite uh, TV shows. It's actually the number one, number one uh, reality streaming show. And a big reason that I love it and everyone loves it is host Alan Cumming. Well, he was on The Tonight Show uh, Wednesday night and talked about the overwhelming success of this show. Look. I don't know 95% of the people who come on the show. Oh, that's Just, good. I don't really follow reality shows. And then I get a crash course in them. Here's a headline from Daily Beast. Uh, obsessed. The traders, why is everyone so obsessed with the greatest reality show on TV? Right. Not too shabby. From Daily Beast. I'm, I'm, I'm wearing this coat tonight. Oh, you like, are? I, go, I get to keep all my traitors things. And whenever I go, I go out and someone says, that's a lovely coat, I'm like, traitors. And do you get to like watch it all in like a secret... Bunker. I well, like I'm there. I'm. It's in real time. It's like an immersion of the uh, an episode. But I, when I'm getting um, ready in the morning, they're having the breakfast bit. You know, been wondering who's been killed. And I have a big, huge screen in my room in the castle with all different, all the feeds of all the cameras. So I feel like a James. I've got my dog, like a James Bond villain, <laughs> watching them all. So when uh, I go into the room, I've heard them all gossiping. Sometimes I hear them talking about me. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> I love him. 
By the way, uh, this week, The Traitors was renewed for a third season on Peacock, as it should. And let me tell people, I'm not a fan of every reality show that's featured on The Traitors, because, you know, it's a group of, and it's not just reality people. They, they, like, Ryan Lochte was on last year, but you don't have to know... Who you don't are. have to know a lot of the people to enjoy the format and the fun of, mm -hmm. of the traitors. Mm -hmm. It's just a well-produced show. Alan makes it so accessible. It's just, we need more fun shows. This right. is just fun. You can just watch it and let it go over you. More late night, Abbott Elementary star and creator Quinta Brunson was our guest on Jimmy Kimmel. A few weeks ago, uh, Quinta won the Emmy for Best Actress in a Comedy, and Jimmy asked about a certain gift that she received. This is uh, incredible to me. This You posted this photograph. This is what Oprah sent you after you won the Emmy. <laughs> Absurd. Absurd. That's, now, that's all the flowers, like, in the world. Yes. That is, and you're not a giant person, but that's a giant, <laughs> giant bouquet. Uh, when I think when I see a photograph like this, oh, I've never seen a photograph like this, I think, <laughs> what does Stedman have to get Oprah for Valentine's Day now? <laughs> Like, if this is Oprah's idea of a reasonable gift, like, can he get away with just a dozen flowers? I think it's things we can't even imagine. Like, maybe he just gives her, like, quiet. Like, peace and quiet. <laughs> I can imagine that. I can't even imagine placing that order to your local florist, you know? Right. Can I get a bouquet the size of a small steel mill? Yeah, you know? Please. The third season of Abbott Elementary premiered, by the way, this week on ABC. The staff is loving it. And Quinta did say the flowers did not go to waste. She gave them, she uh, separated them, and divided them among the crew. I wonder, like, how heavy that bouquet was. Right? You know I'm saying, like, someone had to, like, bring a Mack truck to bring I thing did in, see, you know? thank you for asking, I did see the one that she gave to Cheryl Lee Ralph. Uh-huh. Uh, and Cheryl recorded it. Uh, three guys had to deliver it to her house. Three <laughs> delivery men had to deliver that to her. <gasps> and what's that vase look like? You know what right. I mean? Like, what do you do with that? Yeah. You know I'm saying? Like, I can't donate that to Goodwill. No. <laughs> like, here's my face. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Oprah, you have way too much money. Next up, Quinta Brunson's co-star in El Abbott Elementary, the aforementioned Cheryl Lee Ralph, was a guest on The View on Wednesday. Uh, you may have forgotten, I actually did. She starred with Whoopi in Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit, and Whoopi... On the show, dropped a big surprise question during the interview. Look at the Cheryl's reaction. We're in the process of putting together three. Yeah. Will you come <gasps> be part of it? Whatever it is. Wouldn't it have been funny if she would have just said, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Whoopi, no, I'm busy. Uh, Goldberg uh, also invited uh, Ralph back to The View because they're going to be doing, uh, the show's going to be doing a sister act reunion of the every cast member that can come back because, because, here we go, feeling old, it's been 30 years since Sister Act 2 came out. Yeah, 30 years. Since the second one came since out? Since the second one came out. Oh, jeez. Yeah, okay. since the second one came out. I'm glad they're doing a three, and I'm glad they're taking their time, which means they're really working like on the 30 script. 30 years? Yeah, Whoopi's been wanting to do a part three for years. And you, you, you got to do it quickly. I, I, the rumor yeah. is Kiki Palmer's going to be in it, and they keep floating Bette Midler's name around in there. I would love to see Bette and Whoopi mm -hmm. as nuns. That would be fantastic. Oh, yeah, yes. That would be great. Next in the dish, speaking of reunions, a reunion on the radio for our friend Howard Stern. On Wednesday, he chatted with Oscar frontrunner, and I love him, Paul Giamatti, about his movie that I love, The Holdovers. If you don't remember... Paul, look at this scene. <laughs> Paul played Paul played Howard's boss in the fantastic movie Private Parts. His nickname, Howard's boss's nickname, was Pig Vomit in the movie. And Pig Vomit was based on Howard's real boss at WNBC. Paul, if you're a Howard fan, you laughed right there. Uh, Paul says he has Stern to thank for his acting career and will definitely thank him if he wins the Oscar for Best Actor. Yeah. 
as he should. Well, during the interview, Howard asked Paul about, and I mentioned this to you guys when I reviewed it, in the holdovers, Paul, the character, has a lazy eye, which many people thought was real. Look. The whole time you did the movie, mm. whatever they do to f your eye, I don't know how they do it. It's like, a they, lens. They, it was a, it's it's a, a lens. big, soft contact lens. And it's, oh. you know, and there's a guy, they have to have a guy, they have to have a guy taken in and out. I couldn't do it myself. And could you see normally out of your eye when they put this? No, no. it's just see? opaque. So I was blind in, in one eye. I couldn't see out of one eye. And driving the car, that was a nightmare. And it was like trying to pull up to the curb and they'd be like, can you get closer to the curb? I'm like, I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> Give me a break. I was like, I can't see anything. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, Paul says he doesn't like anything dealing with his eyes and uh, he can't even wear contacts. Can't even wear contacts. I'm, I'm the same way. I could never wear contacts. People ask first, I like my glasses, mm -hmm. but I can't. I'm squeamish with that too. So you would let someone else, though, put a thing in your eye before you would do it yourself? Yeah. Really? I would let, like, Jeff oh, yeah. do it. Yeah. I'd let... Would you let me do it? Would I let you, would let you, let you let do it? Would you let me do it? Yeah. Sure. See? No, he wouldn't. Look at that. No, I wouldn't, actually. No. Yeah. Uh, Paul told a funny story about a legendary singer and actress trying to get a hold of him. This was another great moment. Look at this. There's this thing around you that Cher is a huge fan of yours, and she yeah. wants to speak to you and speak with you. She does that to me. I, every yes. now and then I get, a, I get a message from somebody that says, Cher, not just, she really needs to talk to me. Like it's important, <laughs> like it's crucial that she talks to me. And I'm like, what the f why does Cher want to talk to me? Nobody will tell me, and then right. I never hear anything. And then a year will go by, and then it happens again. Eventually I did... Somebody did, because I do this podcast, right. and, and somebody from the podcast did get in touch with her, and she did call me and leave a message on oh, my she phone. Did. Yeah, and then I <laughs> What'd called. What did she say? All she said was, I hear you want to talk to me. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was all she no, said. you want to talk to me? Yeah, I was, to and say. that's what I said. I left her a message, and I said, "I thought you, I, that's great. I'd love to talk to you, but I thought you wanted to talk to me." And that's the last I heard. I haven't heard anything again. <laughs> you want to talk to her? Uh, you can hear that whole interview as you should. It's a great conversation with Howard on Sirius XM. And as I recommended, The Holdovers, the Best Picture nominee, you can watch it on Peacock now. It's, again, if you missed that episode of our show, I loved it. Capital L loved it. Um, just know, my friend Alexis watched it. There, it's, this is a good note. Mm. It's not a whiz-bang movie. It starts off, it's, it's slow. I mean, it's a slow build. So don't get discouraged and go, ooh, Lord. It, it's so good. It's okay. so enjoyable. I like a slow movie. Yeah. I mean that, too. No, I yeah, do, yeah. I mean that. W-N-B-C, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Sticking with movies, next up, it's time to be quiet again. Oh, no. We're getting our first look at the prequel to the hit movie franchise, a quiet place and this one this is how it all began i guess yeah hello jason a prequel with lopita niango look Quiet Place Day 1 opens in June. It's another sequel to the franchise. Uh, and yet another, I should say, sequel, not a prequel, opens in 2025. This movie and part two, part two is okay, part one. Part one's great. In the theater, scared. I was, I, that cliche, edge of your seat, mm -hmm. I was on the edge of my seat. It's like if anybody makes a noise, you're like, oh my God, yeah, shut it. up. Yeah, <laughs> it was done by John Krasinski. He, uh, he, did, he wrote it, everything did. Yeah, and is, did he write this one? He wrote, it, didn't he wrote but didn't direct, and his oh, wife was the other one, Emily Blunt. Mm -hmm. Mary Poppins, that's right. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Aaron, we have music, and I'm going back to school when we come back, back in a moment. <laughs> Fish
shot of water again when I become a middle school teacher. Can you make sure he's paying attention? <laughs> sure. And we went to Actually, the I become a middle school student. <laughs> and then we're celebrating the maestro. Happy birthday, John Williams. And speaking of music, we'll wrap things up with the Bette Midler of the Twin Cities, our friend Aaron Schwab. That and more when we come back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back, everyone. Well, it's a really, it sounds like a cliche, but it's real. It's a job that can change lives, but not everyone is cut out to be a teacher. Isn't, isn't that the truth? Yeah. Uh, recently, I, <laughs> I got a chance to try and teach middle school kids, uh, but that didn't work out, so I ended up becoming a student. Uh, we, we changed the minute I saw the teacher. Uh, and by the way, the class, the class is watching right now. They're taking, they're taking a break, so everybody wave to the children. Hi. It's time for our latest fish out of water. I'm Mr. Turtnin. And what are you going to attempt to do today? Uh, we're going to have a little read aloud and discussion. We're going to do a little bit of grammar work um, and hopefully end with a class game. And what's different about today? Uh, we have somebody who had a kind of take fifth grade all over again a little bit. <laughs> special guest. Hopefully the seat's big enough. But mm -hmm. Hold on. Barely. One of these things <laughs> is not like the other. I flunked fifth grade. Okay, fifth grade. Um, read aloud today is called What If Everybody Did That? Um, as I read this one, I want you to kind of think about what, the, what about this book sticks out to you? What does it make you think about? All that sort of thing. No. My fifth no. grade class was very different. For sure. I had Mrs. Knessa, yep. and it was her last year of teaching, and she constantly went like this. So I didn't learn anything. You didn't learn anything because the teacher was just doing stuff <laughs> yes. with her tongue? Yeah. That's all it took to distract well, you? I was very easily distracted. Oh, can you make sure he's paying attention? <laughs> when we went to the zoo, I fed just a little of my popcorn to the bear. The zookeeper waved his broom and said, what if everybody did that? At Uncle William's wedding, I just took a little lick of the frosting from the fancy cake. The lady behind the table glared at me over her glasses and said, what if everybody did that? On the way to visit Grandma and Grandpa in Kansas, I dropped just one soda can out the window. The patrolman who pulled us over said, what if everybody did that? I just wanted to see how fast the grocery cart would go. It went faster than I expected. When that At recess, I threw just one snowball at Sammy. Mr. Walter saw me. When he sent me to stand by the wall, he said, what if everybody did that? I got in trouble two times in school growing up. It says in the middle of winter, and um, this kid packed a very neat, tight snowball, and he threw it at me. I stood up, without standing up. I looked at the kid who kind of hugged it at me. I looked at the adult across the field. I looked at the kid, adult, and I just wound up and just threw it at the kid still, and I had a miss recess <laughs> for the next two days, but <laughs> was it worth it? Maybe, but maybe avoid doing that unless you're willing to face the consequences. So, Jason, why might, might we not do that? You don't know what that person's going through, so maybe they threw that because they're having a bad day at home. You know, Be the bigger person. If you're throwing that snowball, it's probably not going to hit them. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Well, can nobody laugh at that? That was, yes. We're going to transition to the morning work. Um, what you need out is only a pencil. I need a pencil, though. This is somebody's desk, really? Do you have stuff in here? Yeah. But like money? <laughs> I'm going through a kid's drawer. I know this isn't a contest, but they seem like farther ahead than me. That's all you did. You just wrote your name on the top of the paper? That's it. 
What if everybody did that? <laughs> um, but let's take a look at one, two, three, and four for Monday. Check out your answers over there. Okay. Does everybody know you're just supposed to do Mondays? <laughs> Jason does figure that out, right? Who knew you were just supposed to do Monday? Raise your hand. <laughs> Whatever, Eric. <laughs> oh, well, I got to tell you, uh, that guy, that teacher was so nice. And uh, look at this. This is a sack. All, uh, first of all, uh, or second of all, the kids are watching right now, I think. And they all, hello. And they all wrote us letters, uh, little thank you letters. Yeah, look at this, a whole stack of letters. Oh, my God. Isn't that nice? Jason, you were really bad at the quiz. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Jason, you seem cool. I know. And I, it, 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 they were so nice. And again, the original intent was for me to teach the class. But I'm like, oh, no, he's really good. He can teach the class. I will listen to him. And oh uh, it, it, ended so up, it ended up being so much fun. And because, and you walk back into that school. Mm -hmm. And you know how elementary schools had that smell? Oh, I yes. felt like I was back in fifth grade again mm -hmm. so I love teachers Thanks, we Turtle Lake. yep yep thank you <laughs> Turtle Lake we appreciate you guys and happy fifth grade we'll be right back back in a moment is that sweet so Welcome back to the show, everybody. Well, he's considered one of the greatest film composers of all time. I would personally say the best. We're talking about the maestro, John Williams. He set the standard for how to use music in movies, elevating soundtracks with melodies that audiences remember for years and years and years. Well, today, John Williams turns 92 years old. That's right. So to celebrate, I'm counting down my. Now this is, you know how I always complain about other people's lists? I'm thinking, well, I have a show, I can do my own list. So, so this is my list in, uh, of top five movie scores by John Williams. Now, before we roll the first one, let's just say that my list is already controversial uh, within our staff. Here's, here's number five. Yep. Yep. I put, now let me tell you, you'll find out why in a second. My number five pick, I vacillated on, but I landed on 1993's Jurassic Park. It's one of those themes that no, if you start humming it to anybody, they immediately know what it is. It's so iconic. It had to be in the top five. Next, a theme from a franchise that began in 1981. Yep. Number four. Number four on my list of the best John Williams scores of all time, movie scores, Indiana Jones. Again, one of those that you hear it. I don't care if you're two or 72, you know it's Indiana Jones. Okay, let's move to my top three. Number three is one of my favorite movies of all time. I actually think it's yeah, let's. Uh, here's what I put as my third favorite score by John Williams. <laughs> yep. Yep. Number three is uh, E.T., The Extraterrestrial. E.T. E actually is my all-time favorite movie. Uh, another one of those scores that I, you hear it and you do kind of get goosebumps. Uh, the scene in the movie where the bikes take flight and that crescendo happens, if you don't feel something, you're dead. I'm just, you're dead and you should just go right to the funeral home. Yeah, well, coming in at number two, uh, this one is such a pop, it got, it seeped into pop culture and has never released. It's a theme that creates mystery and suspense with just a couple notes. Number two. Ooh, 
Yep. Made everybody afraid to go back in the water. I, 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 just to tell you my thought process, this almost was number one because the behind the scenes story of Jaws, Steven Spielberg thought it was ridiculous. Uh, John Williams called Spielberg over and said, I have the theme and he played the two notes and Steven started laughing and went, what? That's it? He goes, yeah, it's the shark because you don't see the shark for most of the movie. That represents the shark. It's brilliant. Well, that brings us to number one. Again, one and two, I could have switched, but it's one of the most instantly recognizable tunes from any movie. Here's my number one score from John Williams. Yep. You you may not know what a Wookiee is. You may not know Jar Jar Binks. You may, you may not know what BB-8 is, but you know this is Star Wars. Now, that is why I listed it as number one. Well, John Williams has so many iconic scores. Uh, scores. I had to name some honorable mentions, and those would be number six, almost number five, the theme to Harry Potter. Number seven would be the Imperial March from The Empire Strikes Back. And number eight, possibly higher, the theme from Superman. Uh, yeah, if you forgot Superman, it's one of those because we have, you haven't heard it in a while, you forget how, how iconic the theme from Superman is. I actually use it as the theme for my radio show, to be uh, uh, honest with you. Regardless, Maestro, happy birthday. We hope we get many more years with you. We'll be right back, back after this. Yeah. Look, hey. Look who it is. Welcome back. Time for a little music. Oh, hi. Um, I'm over here. Hi. It's not my first day here, I promise. Whether I pull the hands I'm a professional, I know. It's all right. Whether you're happily married or happily single and a little salty about it. Uh, <laughs> Valentine's Day is almost here, and our next guests are, are here to celebrate no matter what you think about the holiday. Give it up for Aaron Schwab and Jay Fuchs, everybody. Hello. Our dear Hello. friends. Hello. Hello, friend. Hello. Now, Hello. again, uh, for the new folks in our audience, Aaron is, I, I call her the Bette Midler of the Twin Cities, but she's also family. Aaron is our award winning audience coordinator here at the I Jason won an award? Show. You won an award, yeah. I don't know what that is. Is it an Emmy? Oh, it's an Emmy, yeah. Hell, we haven't even won an Emmy, so yeah. Anyway, okay, can, uh, what, uh, describe this show for new folks and old folks alike. <laughs> okay. Not the age Emmy, old, old folks. People? I mean, you know, people uh, that are used to it. We've been doing a Valentine's show as long as we've been playing together, so that's almost 25 years. That's a long time. So every time we do it, we like to make sure it's actually, there's a couple, there's a couple holidays that are kind of polarizing. One of them uh, in a romantic way. One of them is New Year's Eve, right, which is why we started a whole new holiday. It's cool. Uh, a much ho more tell low pressure holiday, New Year's Eve Eve, so you don't have to worry about having a yeah. date or making out with somebody at midnight. Yeah. It's fine, right? But Valentine's Day is the same thing. I'd say, oh, I'm doing a Valentine's show. And people would be like, I'm not coming because I don't have anybody to celebrate Valentine's Day with. And do we they, were like, okay. Do they, say, do they say it just like that they to do. you? Yeah, they do. They yeah. do. They're very bitter, yeah. right? And so we were like, that's okay. We sing all the songs because I only know at two and a half songs that are not love songs. Everything else is a love song in some capacity because a love song doesn't have to be happy. It can be tragic. It can be sad. It can be about friendship. It can be about um, your dogs. It can be about anything. You do the show often. Uh, well, I mean, every time New Year's or uh, Valentine's rolls around, mm -hmm. oh, how do you keep it? How do you two keep it fresh? Well, I mean, that's a question. I mean, I don't do mean like that. I don't mean like that, you perv. I just mean. That's another show. Is that another show? Is that? That's, another show. that's the. There's a lot of new products the on the market show? for keeping it fresh. So we've been trying to explore some new options. And is there a cream for that? There's a cream. You can put it anywhere, yeah. actually. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Uh, Happy Valentine's Day. How? Uh, <laughs> We gotta go, okay, they're telling me to shut up so you can start singing. What are you guys gonna sing? 
We're gonna do a medley so we can give you guys sort of an idea of the span of music we could do in one evening at, this is some of our greatest Valentine's hits. There we go, if you're watching from the Twin Cities, you can catch Aaron and Jay's Naughty and Nice Valentine Show Friday, February 16th at Crooner Supper Club. For tickets, head to eventbrite.com. Search for Aaron and Jay. Here's Aaron and Jay, everybody. We're married, but not to each other. We both have husbands at home. We do. We look like a couple when we're together. But she has a man of her own. It's true. When we're hugging, the sparks aren't flying. But when we're singing, we climax in tune. want you to know that I'm happy for you. <laughs> I wish nothing but the best for you both. Cause the mess that you made was unable to give to able to be open wide. I just didn't sing any words, it's okay. Oh, and every time you speak her name, does she know that she told me and hold me until you I hear that bumper music every day. You could play, it's fine. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Uh, the Jason Show is proud to uh, now air around the country in 11 different cities, and we appreciate everyone, our new folks, uh, folks that have been with us since the beginning. The show airs at all different times across the country, so we put together a sheet we put together a worksheet for y'all yeah. uh, listing all of our affiliates and the times we air. This will be posted on social media so you can share with your aunties, your grandma, your uncles, uh, and tell them to watch The Jason Show uh, if they live in one of our markets. And again, we appreciate you telling everybody it helps and it is appreciated. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Mary Hathaway from Roseville. She loves the interaction between Kendall and I and, and how much fun the show is. Well, we appreciate you, Mary. She gets a Jason Show mug. And uh, she's up for the monthly grand prize. Includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to our friends at Becker Furniture. Love you, Becker. And a $250 gift certificate to Renew Med Spa. Well, we've had fun today. I've gotten we coffee. Have. We get song. Uh -huh. I had a, a fifth grade teacher. I mean, it's been great. I've graduated fifth grade again. Aaron yeah. put on sparkles. I mean, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ending the show with another performance by the now very sparkly Aaron Schwab and the equally sparkly Jay Fuchs from their Naughty and yep. Nice Valentine show. If you're here in Minneapolis, come see it. Audience, give it up one more time for Aaron and Jay. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. We're doing this for Paul Giamatti. I'm wearing my share inspired coat I got from Eric for Christmas. Woo! Everybody in the audience and at home, grab your coffee. Let's sing this song. Ready?